or Feinbaum. Because that same man that's on that screen right now that Deion Sanders was talking about is the same Paul Feinbaum that has praised Deion Sanders on many, many occasions. Off as a big bully. And whether you guys know him a million times better than I do. I know him. I respect him. I like him. I admire him. But he still looks like a bully to most people who, who are getting a, a headline of this across the country. Well, I mean, we're discussing it on the number one sports show in America, not because of anything Prime has done on the field, because quite frankly, he hasn't done very much. It, off the field, he's lost uh, most of his team. Deion looks very small and petty here. And, and the then the entity that looks worse than Coach Prime is the University of Colorado for sanctioning this. That was Paul reacting to the news that the University of Colorado had effectively decided to silence a reporter because of the critical comments he wrote about head football coach Deion Sanders. The university confirmed Friday that it would no longer take questions from Denver Post columnist Sean Keeler at football-related events. Coach Prime said this about Paul on RG3's new podcast, Out of Pocket. He's talking about us. How can we be irrelevant? And you're talking about me. Every time I turn around, somebody's sending me a quote that you're talking about me. All oh, right. There's my guy. Hi, Paul. Good morning. All right. The saga Molly. continues. The saga continues, Paul. Uh, what's your response to uh, what Dion had to say on RG3's pod? Listen, uh, he, he, was re he wasn't reacting to what I said that you just got through playing. I didn't hear anything in Prime's response about whether or not uh, he was a bully or a hypocrite or, or why he won't let certain people ask questions. He was talking about something I said five or six weeks ago about the University of Colorado really being an irrelevant program without him, which was a compliment. So, Molly, uh, it, it didn't mean very much to me because uh, it, it, was, it was a fairly – irrelevant reaction. Uh, he, he did say something that I agree with. He, he called me a dying breed in the profession, which I'm proud of because I really do believe that the media should be treated with respect uh, and not have selective persecution like he is using out there, not only with this reporter from Denver, but other reporters as well. A uh, couple of things here. First off, and we're as guilty as anybody, the whole world, because Colorado won a TCU last year, mm -hmm. when Gaga over Dion and the Colorado program. If you go look at the finished product, that product was a disaster. They didn't make a bowl game. They weren't over 500. And Sports Illustrated made them the Sportsman of the Year. What? Sportsman of the Year for a team that goes five and six? Or five? How was he? He brought best? a lot of new eyeballs to college football. But he's football. not the Sportsman of the Year. I'm just saying. He's a superstar. He brought a, new, a lot of new eyeballs at the to end college of the day, football. Molly, His what? son's the star quarterback. All right. At yeah. the end of the day, what was the final record? Yeah, but I'm just saying, to start it off, it, it, was, it was high. You had all celebrities I there understand. at the games. I get it. And I understand there was some juice there. And I watched Colorado USC bet him and everything else, wanted to support him. But the end, of the, re the end result was not very pretty. So that's number one. you got to be fair. I mean, they, they didn't even finish 500. Yeah. And he was on a cover of – he was the sportsman of the year. I mean, how in the world did anybody think last year that the sportsman of the year well, was – Well, you heard him. Everybody's you always – everyone's that. always talking about him. You heard him. That's – which is – and I – listen, he came in the studio last March. I had a great interview with him. I've been a big fan. He's a he's great baseball player. I get it. But hold on now. Anytime you start attacking the media and telling the media you can't ask a question, this is a columnist. This is not some guy, you know, from the uh, Fort Collins Times. This is the Denver Post. It's a huge paper. You can't – you're going to come up small when you start saying that. You you can come to our games and you can be around, but you can't ask the head coach a question? I mean, come on. I mean, that's your, that Dion's got to be bigger than that. I mean, geez, you're afraid to answer a question? Uh, and I don't know anything about the reporter. So, I mean, is he taking unnecessary shots? I can't answer that. They I'm say, not out there. They say he's taking unnecessary shots. They say that it's gotten personal. Um, they say that, you know, they brought up you know, uh, racial insensitivity when it comes to him in terms of his reporting and his words on ch on but if that's and, the and case, his family. Steve, that's what they say. Well, then, then kick him out of the program entirely. Mm -hmm. He's still allowed to go to the games, go to the go all the practices. If right. he's been that detrimental, he's not allowed on Colorado campus. Mm -hmm. Do it that way. Almost like he's doing it halfway. You got to answer the questions from the reporter. It's one question mm -hmm. a week, mm -hmm. and if you don't answer it, you look small. Right. And I think that's what a lot of people think right now. Well, about let me Deion. let me take it from here. <clears throat> Deion Sanders is a friend of mine. I've known him for decades. Got a lot of love for him, and I know a lot of things about, about him that, that the average person doesn't know because I'm one of the people he trusts enough to communicate with on that level. 
Having said that, I'll be right here on national television. And you can put Paul Feinbaum up on the screen as well, please, so I can see him. <laughs> he's wrong. He's wrong about Paul Feinbaum. Let me tell you why he's wrong about Paul Feinbaum. Because that same man that's on that screen right now that Deion Sanders was talking about is the same Paul Feinbaum that has praised Deion Sanders on many, many, including last year, talking about the attention that he brought to college football, how much it was, what, how much, it was much needed, how the scarcity of black coaches in the, in, in the history of college football, what he did to elevate the profile of African-Americans and what they could do in the sport of college football. The person who came to primetime Deion Sanders' defense was Paul Feinbaum. And so when Deion Sanders, who's very popular for telling you, bring your receipts, know what you're talking about, do your homework, et cetera, et cetera, it may have behooved him to do his homework on Paul Feinbaum when it comes to him. Because even though Paul Feinbaum was critical of him the other day and last week, for most of last year, Paul Feinbaum was praising him. Paul Feinbaum talked about how he deserved the job at Florida State. Paul Feinbaum talked about how it would be great if he were in the SEC and he had a hold of a better program as opposed to being in Boulder, Colorado. So I, as much as I love my brother Deion Sanders, and he is my brother, and I love him to death, I also love Paul Feinbaum, all right? And I know that Paul Feinbaum has come to his defense on many occasions. So in that regard, as it pertains to what Deion had to say about Paul Feinbaum specifically, respectfully, you're wrong. He's wrong about that. Now, having said all of that, here's what I would say to you, Doggy, and everybody else. Deion Sanders got to win football games. That's true. Can't lose six straight. Can't lose eight of your last nine games. Can't go four and eight and think that you're not going to get criticism, especially when you started off the season beating TCU, who was the national runner-up at the time, and then you looked at the reporters and said, do you believe? Until they confirmed for you, they believe. And they were like, it's just one game. Do you believe? Oh, you don't believe. And he waved them off. That's how he started the season. But, in the process of bringing that up, are we really going to ignore what he inherited? I mean, my God, Colorado was straight garbage. And they were beyond irrelevant. They weren't even in an abyss because even when you're in an abyss, somebody knows who the hell you are. Nobody's paying attention to them. Their, pro their program was trash. Deion Sanders inherited a 1-11 in team. He had about 51 transfers for crying out loud. He overhauled a lot of different things. And it brought a national attention and national profile. So I didn't think that he deserved, like you said, the Sportsman of the Year or whatever. But I understood what Sports Illustrated was thinking at that particular moment in time because what they were saying is you have this black man in college football where Nick Saban resided at the time, where Kirby Smart still resides, where Dabble Sweeney resides, where Don Ryan Day resides, where Jim Harbaugh resided. And you had... The college football world transfixed on him. It wasn't until they received their comeuppance against Oregon and Coach Lannon did his, his pregame speech that, and made sure the cameras was rolling while he did it to embarrass them and then went out on the field and embarrassed them. It wasn't until then that humility kicked in. So I, you got to take into consideration all that he inherited. You had a vastly undersized defense. Yeah. They were giving up. They were getting ran rough shot over. But his son is a superstar in the making. This brother's got all the potential in the world. Travis Hunter is one of the elite players in the game. All of these things, you got transfers coming out, people gravitating to Boulder, Colorado. First take was there. I was there with Shannon before that, when you did what you're mad about, say, because I didn't invite you. you never you know, do. All of this other stuff. Okay, we're going to go. We got to go to the baseball game. But the point is, all of those things you have to take into consideration. You can't just ignore. You can't just look at Dion. Now you can look at them guys and say the record, the record, the record. Got to win football games. But last year, come on now. Look at what he inherited. Look at how he changed yeah. the culture. Look at the attention he brought to the program and to college football. You can't diminish that significance from Deion Sanders. You just can't. Paul, before you jump in, and obviously, as Stephen A. mentioned, it transcended sports, but we keep talking about the 4-8 and eight record. I do want to mention five of those eight losses were one-score losses. Paul? Absolutely. Yeah. Stephen, I, I, I obviously uh, thank you, and I agree with you. And, and, and my criticism of Dion is for all <coughs> the reasons that you have laid out. I, I caught some flack a few weeks ago because I, I literally threw his name out on this show uh, in the event that Lincoln Riley was replaced, uh, that what a great figure USC. Dion would be, because I, I am a fan of his, but what I'm not a fan of are all the things we've talked about. And that, that's, that to me is, is, dis, is extremely disturbing because 
I know how many people he affected. I, I was on this program five weeks into the college football season last year saying he has taken all the oxygen out of the sport because he's the only thing people are talking about from New York to L.A. That was very positive for all the reasons you laid out. And I think when he, when he goes low, when he becomes petty, uh, for whatever reason, because I'm, I'm not a psychiatrist, it, it takes away from what he can do and how great he can be. Molly, Molly uh, the, and Stephen A. and I have had many conversations about why, why, what he means and what, where he could go. And I know for a fact that, that black coaches, particularly in the South, where I live, uh, have had an incredibly difficult time getting hired uh, because athletic directors just don't have the stomach for it. They don't want to hear from the fans. And, and to me, Dion has, has shattered a, a lot of that. And, and it was one reason uh, why I felt like you know, he, he needed to be somewhere other than Colorado where it would just be constant turmoil. But, uh, but as, as far as his criticism, it doesn't matter. Uh, it, it, we're, the fact that we are talking about him supports part of his theory. But if Dion doesn't win Thursday night and if he gets off to another bad start uh, like he finished, we're not going to be talking about him here. And, and that's to the detriment of what he represents. My question to Steve is this. Should you treat the Denver columnist like that and not let him ask a question? I mean, this is ridiculous. Well, I will say this to you. We and have sound, by the way. Can we play that real sure, quick from, from the Denver uh, columnist, Sean Keeler? Let's play that. Fear is the four-letter word I keep coming back to, and it's everywhere. I think players are afraid. I think coaches are afraid because they saw what happened to the first-year staff. I think media are afraid, and I think Colorado administrators are afraid. And if they win, it'll all be justified. And if they don't, grab your popcorn. I want to say this about the columnist Sean Keeler. I don't know him, and I haven't seen his work. And I hope he understands I'm not judging him. When I bring up the stuff that I've said about him, I'm saying that's what they're saying about him. I'm not saying these things about him. I don't know him. But I will say this. Deion Sanders has a right to say, I don't want to talk to you. My, that wasn't my issue, Dougie, as I explained to Paul Farnbaum the other day. My issue was Colorado as a program getting involved and sponsoring that kind, uh, that kind of behavior. Dion has a right. If you're personally attacking me, I have a right to tell you to kiss off, kick rocks, get the hell out my face. I'm not answering any questions from you. What I don't want is the program to piggyback off the of that. The mandating yeah, the mandating, protocols. Like, yeah. like, wait a minute now. So you keep yeah. it, he's keeping his credential. And he can still come to Colorado events and stuff like that. But he can't answer the question. And you're going to issue a press release as a program. Because you're supporting your coach. Well, wait a minute now. The coach is a big boy, and, I, and, and I'll say this on national television. Deion Sanders is a grown man. You don't need the program to stand up and say, well, we, 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 we support his decision to not talk to a media member. There's plenty of coaches that have dismissed and kissed off media members that they don't like. All of that pomp and circumstance wasn't necessary because now it brings the wrong kind of attention, in my opinion, to Dion from the standpoint, OK, what he's trying to say about Dion now, the bully on the block and all of this other stuff comes into play because now they're going to bring him up as a player with Tim McCarver. They're going to bring him up as a coach at Jackson State. They're going to bring up what he did with the reporter for CBS. They're going to bring up all of these things that have nothing to do with this because now – the focus is going to be on Dion's behavior instead of the columnist. If you simply don't talk to him, but you talk to everybody else, all right, and you leave it at that, that's fine. It's a decision scenario I that just, you don't need. You don't need that kind of distraction. That would be my point. I just feel like Dion is not thin-skinned at all whatsoever, that there must be more to this, that it got to this level. I don't it know enough more. about and I, and I would more. love if, if, if he came on our show and we were able to expound upon it and talk about it, but just knowing Dion all these years, he's not going to let one local report columnist get under his skin. But he already and, did. And change his, no, there's got to be more to it. There's got to be. I'm, there's, I'm saying, yes. Molly, there is more so to it. So there's a deeper but, level. But, but because of Colorado getting involved. I get it, but I'm saying from, even from, the, from the Dion standpoint, I don't know why Colorado chose to double he down, what the thought process it. was, you know, with their PR. That's they should have stayed out yeah. of it. 
Dion's big enough to Paul, handle it himself. What I want to go back to, because obviously you're much more inside the locker room with this, Keeler sounds specifically where he talked about that culture of fear and everybody's fearful of Dion. From what you've been told, does that seem accurate? I think what, what he's talking about is, is from a media standpoint. I can't answer to the players because uh, the, tra- the, the turnover there, I think, speaks for itself. But a lot of reporters today uh, are scared of the people they cover because they, they, they don't make that much money. Jobs are scarce. Uh, and coaches, uh, by and large, are bullies. And, and I'm not talking about Deion Sanders here. I'm talking about yeah. some of the best names in the industry. Uh, and and they, they, because the media is so upside down, uh, I'm not talking about people uh, that are on this show. I'm, I'm talking about local beat reporters that, that all of us were at one time. They they. They have no voice, and, and if they cross a line, they'll get shut out. And that, that's what irritates me, and I, I think I can speak for Mad Dog and Stephen A. as well. So I think that's what he's referring to. I, I wish Keeler would be more specific. Uh, right. He has a bully pulpit. Uh, he may not be able to talk to Dion, but he can certainly talk to us. And I'm not, this does not apply to Dion Sanders. I'm, not talk, I'm just speaking generically to piggyback off of Paul's point. In the day and age that we're living in with the advent of social media and so many people having podcasts, obviously having social media accounts or whatever, they view the fourth estate, the media, in a far more diminished state. Their belief is we have a voice. We don't need y'all anymore, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And so as a result, if you're a local reporter, you're barely, I'm not in anybody's pockets or anything like that, but you're barely making six figures. You know, the vitriol that can come your way because of people targeting you that you may write about, talk about, et cetera, and they don't like you and what have you, it can squash you. It can squash you. We see, I see professional athletes trying to invoke that level of power all the time, which is why one of the reasons I come on the national airwaves, if you see most of the time, I'm coming to the defense of reporters doing their job because I'm I want to know what Stephen A. Smith's end game is here. Right, when you woke up a few days ago and you heard what Deion Sanders did, what was your vision when you started this whole campaign against Deion Sanders? Because, and if you want to say that it's not a campaign, right, I've looked at five videos already and the fifth video has you defending the title now it is has Stephen A. Smith defending Paul Feinbaum Paul Feinbaum versus Deion Sanders okay so I can read between the lines I'm not dumb I can definitely read between the lines and I can get the the point Right, and I can see the working. I can see the machine at work. And I can see who they're using to do the work right now. And that's Stephen A. Smith. Clearly. Clearly. Right? They 1000%. I want to make it clear. Okay, he may say that, oh, he's for he's known Dion so long. He loves Dion. But when you have a title that says Stephen A. defend Paul Feinbaum, some all white dude, against Deion Sanders or Coach Prime. Right, you're making something clear in that statement right there. You're making it clear that Deion is not your guy. Or you could say whatever you want to say, talk whatever you want to talk. All right, talk about all the the great attributes of Deion, what he's done that's good, great, over all the years. But when you make four videos, five videos, criticizing him for what he's done on ESPN and also on your own personal channel, and now you're defending him against Paul Feinbaum, (laughs) who number one can defend himself, right? And oh, sorry, on top of that, you had this guy, Paul Feinbaum, who made disparaging comments and Dion took the time out to respond to him and belittle him and then now you come out defending him you're you're telling the world something right there and there's definitely an agenda behind that people okay there's an agenda behind that for sure All right so right now Stephen A he's just setting up 
the whole scene. All right, so we're gonna see what happens this this fall, all right? This football season. Are right, you already hear Stephen A. saying, "Oh, Dion, he has to win eight games or more. He can't lose six games. He can't lose um, seven games or eight games." Right? He's trying to set up the whole fall for Dion right now. All right, somebody who's supposed to be his friend. All right, but at least we caught it, and you guys. This is just Stephen A. Smith back to work, doing the same old thing that he's been doing before. All right, trying to bring down another one. All right, but let's just hope Coach Prime can stay strong and keep it going. But I'm going to keep on bringing you these videos to show you what's going on with Coach Prime. Show you Stephen A.'s sneaky ways. Okay. When P. Diddy was going down, and, and I'm not defending P. Diddy. This man put out about 20 videos about Diddy. About 20 videos about him. You go scroll up on his personal channel. Obviously, he can't talk about him on ESPN First Take or whatever. But he put out about 20 videos on his personal channel about Diddy. Right now, we're up to five negative videos about Coach Prime. And, he, and his team hasn't even played a game yet. Not even a game. Okay? So, uh, that's about it. So, until next time.